eTool LCD is a web-based, collaborative, performance optimization tool for the built form. Designers can create projects with one or many buildings or infrastructure items. Within these items, design, design scenarios are modelled by importing or entering construction components and systems. Lifecycle impacts and costs are calculated on the fly. The design team can easily identify environmental or cost hotspots and drill down to see the exact sources for these impacts. This allows the design team to understand where to focus efforts to improve the design. Decision makers need clarity on both the costs and environmental benefits of potential design strategies. Design scenarios within eTool LCD enable this. Individual strategies to improve the design performance can be simulated and the effect captured at different intervals over the life cycle of the asset. eTool LCD also offers consultants a range of automated ISO and EU compliant reports to streamline communication and documentation. Project teams can focus on improving their designs rather than writing reports. For quality assurance, designs may be submitted to an independent reviewer with in-app workflows to manage this process. Built for scale, speed and efficiency, eTool LCD is the ultimate tool for taking construction into the low carbon future. Um, there's a library tab here which uh, contains library assets such as um, component templates um, that can be added to buildings, environmental product declarations which again can be added to buildings, but there's, there's also benchmarks, which are whole building um, uh, benchmarks and a, rec a list of recommendations. So these are documented strategies that you can apply to buildings um, and then references as well. So a big list of references that um, uh, can be applied to um, designs or, or, um, or templates. Yeah, we built these whole, uh, whole building templates to put in front of the design team and start to try and run um, analysis. So we have whole buildings that include services and fit out of a retail, of an office, of a hotel there. Um, we have whole building templates that just look at a kind of steel structure, composite deck, um, fit out whole building templates again there. That one's whole building template for a concrete uh, structure. What I'm going to do is add this one in, which is just the sub and superstructure, which is all that's required for, for Bree in 2018. If I was doing an LCC, I'd probably add one of these more detailed ones that includes services, fit out, etc. So I've added this 5,000 meter squared of, of office, and within that, we can see we've got some stuff in there for equipment, for people. Uh, substructure, superstructure, a bit of finishes, um, and some external work, some landscaping there. We can drill down into the individual templates that make up this uh, uh, this building. And we see we've got some piling in there. The assumption is 350 mil diameter, and there's about 64 meters of piling on average for a building this size. And uh, well, when you get to the latter stages of the design, you'll be able to update this or reload it. Maybe they've uh, managed to reduce piling completely and just gone for the strip foundations. You can run that analysis of, of the difference that makes with, between these two um, two systems. We, yeah, we can then use bulk import to to match the templates and the software to, to what we have in the spreadsheet here. So I'll go down to the import tab. Select my example, and it's asking me for the uh, the categories here. I'm going to ignore this building category; that's not relevant. Uh, but this one, the description here, is uh, matching up to the template name. This is our quantity column, and this is our unit column. And we see there that the software has um, 
taken all these descriptions and matched them to the templates. Now, these are things that I use often. The software will, will match it very, very quickly and easily. Uh, some, some of them I don't use quite so often, like timber frame uh, with a timber door, and I have to manually uh, select one. And so there's a suggestion there that pops right up, or I could um, search for door and see the whole list of door templates that, that we have available. Um, so I select that one, and I go to next. Uh, finish up here. Uh, once I've selected my design that I want to link with the Revit model, I can hit link here and then I can hit the update eTool LCD button here. Note that after your first import, if you change the quantities in your model and you hit update again, it'll update the quantities in eTool. Uh, so it's not just a one-off transfer, it, it, it maintains that, that uh, component integrity between the two models in that it's, uh, it's matching components with eTool templates rather than trying to match materials with materials. The advantage of this um, is that you can use relatively immature um, BIM models where you haven't defined your materials yet, you've only got some uh, rough geometry. Um, and also enables you to calculate accurately um, your transport distances for your materials or your installation processes and a host of other parameters that are only available in the eTool templates. First of all, what you need to do is to add the EPD to your library so it can then be added to your design. So you enter the impact for different stages and different indicators. And then you save this and you also enter the details of your EPD. You can add the EPD to a whole building, LCA, and see how it correlates the proportional impact. Uh, in this example here, we're just analyzing concrete structures, foundations and uh, structural walls, all concrete components. And you can see the, the EPD um, for the cement is, has quite a significant impact overall. So let's look for uh, materials one. And um, we saw our glazing was quite big, so let's swap timber frame for glazing. What you do is you go to add and record. Software is now taking a picture of the um, of all the impacts, whether it's CO2 or cost or certification or any of the other environmental indicators, it's got that all saved um, and, and it will measure the difference, the delta between um, uh, what was there previously and the, the changes that, that we make now. So I'm recording this recommendation. I want to make the change. And what I'm going to do, there's lots of different ways we can um, make updates to the model or make, make these kind of changes. In bulk swap, we can select different materials and update their quantities or their actual material, uh, swap board for timber, um, swap out the paint, uh, uh, make bulk changes to any one of those variables that, that you saw when we, when we looked at an individual material, bulk change to recycle content, to quantity, to waste factors, transport losses, transport distances, etc. What you do is when you have your model done, you go into the recommendations and you start um, recording design changes and understanding the relevance. So what is the percentage savings? Each improvement will have against the benchmark. So this list gives you a lot of the tangibility. You know, when you're discussing project improvements or improvement strategies, it's quite easy to lose focus. And you have a lot of options. You don't know which ones you should target first. Um, so this is useful for you to first um, 
model and quantify the improvement of each strategy, but then you can classify them. The other interesting part about this is that you can run life cycle costing in combination with your environmental analysis. So you can just flick the indicator to cost. So you have here this LCI, this inventory that I'm using has the Australian dollars as an as a indicator. So you just flick the cost um, and then you now understand the impact of your model on a financial basis, on payback period, okay? So now it's the savings, uh, the monetary savings, the percentage savings in terms of uh, dollar savings, life cycle savings. Yeah, we have a cost database that sits behind uh, in the back end of the tool. Uh, but it can be updated. You can scale costs up and down to match your, your project uh, or your QS um, costs. If you would uh, like to go to that level of detail, you can uh, use the scale button here to scale costs up and down. Uh, we'll go back to the original. Uh, and uh, the, the, the model's cost data sets are uh, all scaled up accordingly. You can scale up individual templates as well. Uh, if this piling template was coming in uh, significantly lower than the or higher than, than the cost that assumed in eTool, we can scale them up and down uh, uh, in the, the scale cost tab here. We can also, if we're using bulk upload to import the templates, we can also import the actual costs that are referenced in bulk upload if you're if you are using a cost plan and then you, your costs can match up exactly.